Hello everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. And as I mentioned in my last video, I kinda wanted to get into some manga tubing, if you will. You know, there's just something about manga, the physical, having the physical volumes in your hand, seeing the physical artwork in front of you. And honestly, it's really just a refreshing break from, you know, the screen time. Cause you know, we're doing all the Zoom classes. Everything is on the computer nowadays. And so it's really just a nice break from staring at screens all day. I personally feel more immersed when I do read physical manga. On top of that, I do like the collection aspect of it, and I do think it's very aesthetically pleasing to have them on display. Just wanted to note, you know, the elephant in the room. The title of the series is Monthly Manga Reads, but obviously you can tell that this is going to be multiple months uh, for this particular video. And that's just kind of because I missed the first two months, you know, and I, I didn't make videos for those. So I just wanted to make a comprehensive version of it. But from here on out afterwards, I will be mostly and most frequently doing simple single month videos worths. And so with this video, basically, I will be showing a few pages of the volumes here and there, maybe not every single volume. I will try to show some, if not most, of the front and back covers, the sides, the spines. And to the best of my ability, I will try to avoid relaying any spoilers, because if it's one thing that I hate most, it's running into spoilers, either on the internet, in person. It just ruins the experience, in my opinion. And yeah, nothing more needs to be said on that. Oh, one thing, if I do happen to end up mentioning some kind of spoiler in this video or in future videos, I will do my best to put up timestamps on the screen just so you know whether or not you need to skip ahead. Alrighty, folks, so first and foremost on our list, by the way, I will be kind of going over these in alphabetical order. Uh, I don't know, just kind of what I wanted to do. It doesn't really matter. Whoa, that's falling over. That's not okay. That's not okay. So this is called Attack on Titan. Personally, I just usually refer to it as AOT for efficiency purposes, but as with most people, this is kind of something that was initially introduced to me through the anime, actually. If I may say so myself, holy freaking cow. This anime is probably my favorite. I know we're talking anime. I know we're not supposed to be talking anime. We're supposed to be talking manga, but the anime adaptation of this, honestly, it's probably my favorite anime of all time to date, you know, at this point in my weeb otaku manga journey. And so let's just go ahead and show you a couple of the artwork here. Some of, some of the spines. I won't show you every single page because it might have some spoilers. So let's just go ahead and show you a couple of pages. And so for those of you unfamiliar with the story, um, basically this takes place in a more or less post-apocalyptic, you know, action shonen, uh, epic of a freaking story. In this world, basically, humanity is kind of on the brink of destruction, more or less, kind of pinned to just this small fragment of the world, if you will. Uh, and they are kind of enclosed by these giant, massive, colossal freaking walls in order to protect them from these giant man-eating humanoid creatures called titans. And, you know, the story subsequently follows the journey of a uh, passionate lad, Aaron Yeager. I know what you're thinking. Giant man-eating monsters, you know, they threaten humanity's survival. You know, the MC joins the ranks, you know, he starts off weak, you know, the MC undergoes character development, gets stronger, changes the hearts of his comrades, defeats the monster, saves the day, saves the world. Well, 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 well. I mean, if you think that's the pattern of the story, then man, that's so freaking cute. Like you're actually making me blush right now. Like, I mean, come on. But I will say respectfully, you could not be further from the truth. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys, but this is just a story that does not follow convention. Minimal plot armor. And if you love dark stories, action, mystery and suspense, massive character development, uh, and just a seriously complex story with deep themes and well-crafted world building, then this, this is a manga for you. Just, I implore you, read it, watch it, whatever works for you, this is a story you need to have in your arsenal of anime and or manga. Alrighty, behold this behemoth, behemoth of a manga book, or a manga volume or a, an omnibus, if you will. So this is the manga Berserk, and this is the deluxe edition, which contains volumes one through three. Uh, at this point, I think I've only read the first two volumes. Uh, I was actually planning on reading this before this video, but uh, I do wanna be honest with you guys, I didn't read the third volume just yet. However, I do plan on reading it very soon because this is just a really, really good story. Uh, oh, sorry about that, I gotta get that in the camera. This is kind of a dark fantasy, you know, medieval world that this takes place in. And the story follows the more or less anti-hero of a character, Guts. Uh, actually, probably, he's probably very anti-hero-esque. 
Uh, but anyways, he's like this mercenary-like character, and check out this artwork, it's freaking insane. And so this mercenary-like character, Guts, known as the Black Swordsman, we're kind of taken through his treacherous, tragic, intense experiences throughout. And if you like dark fantasy, if you like violence, tragedy, etc., then this has got to be one of your go-to mangas. I highly recommend it. And in fact, on Mal, Berserk is one of, if not the best rated manga of all time. Come on, this is freaking glorious. This is the most epic, nice feeling book I've ever held in my hand. All right, so next up guys, we have Black Clover volumes one through six. Now I currently only have one, two, or sorry, one, three, and, uh, four, five, and six. I am missing number two, but I did read two on the Shonen Jump app. It's like two bucks a month now. Contrary to what a lot of people think, I actually really enjoyed the anime. Uh, it's not like a top 10 anime for me or anything, but I mean, I found it pretty enjoyable nevertheless. Uh, I do understand some of the complaints about the animation quality, but I mean, with the new movie coming out, you know, hey, maybe they'll address that and some of those concerns, but you know, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But in terms of the general story of the manga, I like the whole concept of the grimoires, the elemental magic system, uh, you know, the magic knights, especially the juxtaposition and the parallels we see with Asta and Yuno. They're, you know, those the rival characters uh, on their quest to become the wizard, the wizard kings. Very uh, conventional in terms of shonen, but it's still very, very, very enjoyable. Like just because something is conventional or follows a pattern doesn't necessarily make it bad. Check that out, very nice, very nice. And so if you don't actually know what this is about, basically it follows the story of a boy who is born without magic in a world where magic is basically everything. And it takes us through his journey to become the Wizard King, which is like the overarching protector of the Clover Kingdom, uh, where the story mostly takes place. And so the characters in this story, Black Clover, they're really fun. And it's got some really good action scenes in here uh, and great art. But what I think really needs to be noted here in terms of what makes this manga really great is the pacing. The pacing in this is just really, really, really nice. I really like the pacing of Black Clover. It's not drawn out too long. Uh, and, and it's just a really enjoyable, fun read if you're into Shonen. All right, guys, so here is my Claymore Complete box set right here, and check it out. That is Claire, our main character. She is an absolutely amazing character with amazing character development throughout the series. Let's just go ahead and look at the side, you know, the bindings right here. Very clean, very, very nice. Also, Amazon, you screwed me. You didn't get me the freaking illustration booklet. It was supposed to be right here. Never came with it. Very upset with the Amazon. Uh, but yeah, that said, let's go ahead and take a look at my favorite cover design. Now, I'm not going to show you every single cover and back because, you know, I've already shown you guys this in the Claymore Complete Box Set unboxing, but here, here is my favorite cover design. Now, this is just absolutely beautiful artwork, I think. Um, here's the side, of course. Check it out. Very nice, very nice. Um, as of right now, Claymore is my favorite manga. I'm almost without words when I want to describe this because... You know, it's breathtaking, really. It's breathtaking. Now, I know most people are going to be like, Oh, but Berserk is way better. Berserk is way better. Oh, just keep reading. Keep reading. Guts is a way better character. Yada, 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 yada. More tragedy. Yada, yada, yada. I'm sure that is the case. I haven't read as much of Berserk as I have Claymore. And so maybe I have a little bit of bias because this was, you know, my first uh, dark fantasy read. And I did read it before Berserk. So maybe I like it more for that reason. Having said that, I won't say that I'm not going to like Berserk more eventually. Uh, but just at this current moment, Claymore is my favorite series. So this follows Claire's journey right here through these 27 volumes. And honestly, I highly, highly, highly recommend Claymore if you are into dark fantasy, uh, just general character development stories, action, battle shonen, things like that, things of that nature. Um, Rocky in here is another character that undergoes a lot of really good character development. I want to show you guys all the art, but like if I show you all the art, then I'm gonna like spoil things for you. Just check out this freaking manga. It's 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 my favorite right now. It'll probably not be my favorite forever. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Uh, so because I keep an open mind. But do yourself a favor. Read this manga. Highly recommend. A beautiful story in my opinion. The next series of volumes that I read was the entire Dead Man Wonderland manga. And so this is actually a really, really great series. Um, uh, it's also, it's probably in my top five, maybe top 10. As of right now, again, I'm gonna be reading way more series in the future, but uh, I read all of these. First thing I wanna know, volume two was insanely freaking hard to obtain physically. Uh, they were listing this bad boy for like $200. Here's volume one, by the way. I'll just show you some of the artwork as I'm talking. They were listing the second volume for like a hundred or so dollars. 
uh, on like eBay or something like that, some website, some bidding type website online, which is just absolutely insane uh, for a single manga volume. And it's not like it was out of print or anything. And I think that's something that needs to be mentioned in the manga community. The difference between out of print and out of stock, because sometimes these sellers kind of more or less try to scam you by overcharging, you know, individual manga volumes by claiming or misleading you to believe that uh, they're out of print when in fact they're just out of stock. And so I think Dead Man Wonderland's volume two is uh, just out of stock, not out of print, which is, you know, some people were trying to take advantage of that. But this is a more used copy right here. Uh, if I waited a little bit longer, I think I paid like 16 bucks for this. If I waited a little bit longer, I probably could have gotten a little bit of a cheaper volume on Right Stuff. Shiro is probably my favorite character. Basically, it's about this young boy or like young teenager. He gets sentenced to death to a privately run prison called Dead Man Wonderland, but it simultaneously functions as a kind of cool amusement park for the inmates, which makes this obviously a pretty interesting story. It's a different take on just regular prisons. As we power through this story, we start to see more layers of complexity within this really interesting story, within the characters, the interesting characters that this show. Definite great character development throughout, and I really love the alternating white and black and white and black. Uh, color scheme, beautiful spines, beautiful artwork. I highly recommend it if you like shonen, if you like post-apocalyptic stuff, slight sci-fi, and the works. All right, next up, folks, we got Dragon Ball Super Volumes 1 through 3. So Dragon Ball, whether it's the original, Z, or Super, we don't talk about GT. This is just always going to hold a, a special place in my heart because Dragon Ball and Z and Super, they were the first actual animes I ever got into. And in fact, for a very long time, I refused to watch any other anime but Dragon Ball related stuff. <laughs> it was kind of stupid of me. Really, really stupid of me. I don't know why. And like everyone's like, watch Naruto, watch this, watch that, watch that. I'm like, no, no. And I was just being really stubborn about it. But what drew me to the manga uh, for Super is because, you know, I'm kind of sick and tired of waiting for some more anime content to come out. After the, you know, the Broly movie, they haven't really pumped out anything uh, anime wise. So I, I just need more content. And for me, I'm the type that <laughs> can only start at the beginning. Me, it's, it's a way I have this weird thing where I have to start from the very beginning. Same goes for Attack on Titan, Black Clover. Both of those, I originally started the anime uh, and I'm still watching those. But in terms of the collection and reading process, I really, really prefer to start from the very beginning. It kind of would bother me if I started from wherever I left off in the anime. I don't know if you guys are like that or not. That's just, you know, my speed. Gotta love Goku, gotta love Bulma. You know, Vegeta's freaking cool as always. Broly is probably my favorite, if not second favorite uh, Saiyan. Uh, Beerus, you know, all those cool and fun and funny characters. Krillin, you know. We feel bad for Krillin, but Krillin's good. You know, he comes in clutch, but he really did get left in the dust. <laughs> Next up on our list, we read Full Metal Alchemist Volume 1. Now, I'm gonna have a very controversial opinion here, guys. So in terms of anime, Full Metal Alchemist on, on Mal, my anime list is rated as the number one anime of all time. I watched the first 30 or so episodes, so like I got through halfway through the uh, anime honestly guys i'm just not seeing it like don't get me wrong i don't dislike the manga or the anime i think it's good i think it's interesting but you know what admittedly i didn't finish the anime and i didn't finish the manga so i can't really make any conclusive opinions on it until i actually finish it so i'll keep my mouth shut on that for now but you know as of right now it's like it's okay for me like i like it i don't love it though all right folks so the next manga that i read is going to be goblin slayer volumes one and two so, um, first thing I want to say is we all probably heard about the uh, intense, inappropriate NSFW crazy scene in the anime. Uh, that is also a scene in the manga. Because this is a visual representation of the story, similar to the anime, uh, there are some graphic uh, and you know not safe for work scenes. Having said that though, overall I do think this is a relatively good story with really great artwork. Right here, for example, really insane artwork, really nice. Love the detail there. And honestly, I, don't, I, I really like it. I enjoy it for the most part. Very intense. Um, and I do like my dark fantasy. I gotta get my dark fantasy feeling. So if you do need a dark fantasy fix, you know, this is this is a go-to. Same with Claymore, same with Berserk. For all you dark fantasy fans, fans out there, check those out. Alrighty, folks, so next up is going to be a massive tearjerker, and that is going to be I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, the complete manga collection. Let's go ahead and show you the spine. A bittersweet romance. It's kind of sort of a romance, not entirely, but it's not not a romance either. First and foremost, I'm going to address the title. The title sounds very weird out of context, but trust me, guys, when you read the story, 
This is a very, very important line. It makes sense in the context of the story, and it's actually really a beautiful title, really befitting title act in my opinion. Essentially, this is about a young male high school student, and he kind of finds out that his female classmate has this secret that basically she's going to be dying from a pancreatic disease. That's a given, which is, you're going to find that out like on the first page and you know on the back cover, so it's, it's not like a spoiler or anything. But what's interesting, as I mentioned, is the death, her death, is introduced at the front of the story, at the get-go of the story, and from there we kind of backtrack and we read the manga from a first-person point of view of this male character, and it's just really interesting to see how he perceives her and his experiences with her. To see it through the lens, through his lens, through his eyes, it's just a very interesting read, a beautiful read in my opinion, but it is a bittersweet story. I, I truly implore any of you out there just to give it a shot. If you don't like it, you know, you don't like it, you're out 20 bucks, so what? It's 20 bucks. Or if you want to read it online, I'm sure you can do that too. Or, you know, there's also a movie adaptation. I'm sure there's also a novel. I believe there is a novel and or light novel adaptation. Uh, you know, don't call me if I'm wrong, but there are those other alternatives. This is just one of those stories that basically broke me. I'm sure there will be more in the future like this, but it's a very emotional read. Heartwarming at times, heart-wrenching at times. Let's just go ahead and show you a little bit of the artwork. And you really feel for the characters. I never thought that Bonga could be that emotional simply because, you know, it's just they're just drawings. But trust me guys, when you know the story, when you see the emotion in, in the pictures, when you see the artwork, it all comes together into a beautifully inspiring read. I highly recommend this. Try it out. If you don't like it, then you don't like it. Alrighty folks, next up on our list is going to be Made in Abyss Volume 1. Uh, let's go ahead and show you a little bit of the artwork and the spines in the back. And to get started, oh my goodness. So the world building in this manga is just absolutely glorious. It basically, it's about this young girl and her machine-like, robot-like, humanoid friend. And they kind of journey into this massive, massive like crater or hole in the surface of their world. This massive hole houses many secrets of the planet, houses many relics dangerous and sometimes unknown creatures. And the whole goal behind this massive journey that they end up, that they go on is to find her missing mother who at some point ventured down there. You'll soon come to learn about something called the Curse of the Abyss, which is mentioned pretty early on, so I'm not like spoiling anything. But it talks about the kind of different negative impacts on the body in this world, not as you venture down, but as you venture back up. That obviously poses a major issue to people that travel super, super deep into this massive chasm. The artwork in this is just really, really nice. I just wanted to show you some quick designs. Like, check that out. That is really freaking cool right there. It almost, it almost looks like it's like colored with watercolors instead of like a normal paint bucket tool, but that is that. If you guys appreciate great artwork, detailed and well, crafted world building, Homeric, or big Herculean journeys of sorts, that this is a manga for you and I highly recommend it. I will be picking up the second volume fairly soon. All right, folks, next up on our list is going to be Orange, the complete collection book number one. Alrighty, I don't even know where to begin, but holy freaking cow, guys, this is a very emotionally compelling read. If you're into shoujo, slice of life, romance, and maybe a splash of sci-fi. This is honestly a must read for you. If you like I Wanna Eat Your Pancreas, you're gonna like this too, and I think vice versa. Um, I don't necessarily know if I Wanna Eat Your Pancreas is shoujo specifically. I think this one is for sure. And basically it's about a high school girl, Naho, uh, who receives a letter from herself 10 years into the future asking her to prevent one of the greatest regrets of her life. And that is not saving her soon-to-be friend, Kakaru, Kakaru, not sure how to pronounce it, who's this new male transfer student from, you know, a dark and terrible future that is going to happen to him, which you'll come to find out as you read the story. Also, a quick note before I continue on, if I do happen to mispronounce a name here and there, please don't flame me in the comments. I may mispronounce it, but I just know I'm not doing it intentionally. If I am mispronouncing a name here and there or something along those lines, do correct me in the comment section, but do so in a respectful fashion. I'm willing to learn. I'm open-minded. I don't mind, you know, learning from my mistakes. And just know that I'm not mispronouncing things on purpose if I do happen to mispronounce something. So anyways, obviously, you know, with this letter, she's skeptical at first, but, you know, as she notices the predictions in the letters start to become true one by one, she soon realizes that now she's kind of in this 
sort of moral predicament and she has a sort of moral and personal responsibility uh, on her shoulders that she needs to kind of uphold in order to avoid making the greatest regret of her life. And so honestly, at least for me, I wasn't too sure about this whole shoujo genre in general at first, but this was honestly one of my favorite reads so far, probably in my top five, maybe even top three reads as of right now. That and along with I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. This is just one of those brilliantly bittersweet stories that involves some, you know, pretty relatable themes like, you know, romance and school drama and life regrets and friendship and mental health and so on and so forth. And I really just find it absolutely amazing how a collection of drawings and speech bubbles is able to draw out such emotion. And I'm not entirely sure how the rest of the story will go just yet, as I've only read the first book of, I believe, two. If you like romance, if you like shoujo, slice of life, drama, tragedy, emotional story writing, and the works, then I highly recommend this. This is a must have because it's just an absolute gem in my collection. Alrighty folks, so I know this is kind of cheating, but next up we have ReZero Light Novel Volume 1. Um, so obviously there's a bookmark in, bookmark in here. I didn't actually finish the full volume just yet, uh, but I do plan on finishing it within the next few days. So first and foremost, I kind of got into this from the anime. Uh, at, at this point in time, the anime is currently my number two uh, it's ranked second only to Attack on Titan right now, and I, and I know they're pretty different, but you know I try not to be bound by genre or anything, so I'm, I'm willing to read or watch anything, and if I like it, then I like it. I mean, no harm, no foul. And for those of you that like tend to only stick to shonen or only stick to shoujo, I, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to just try different genres. Watch, read different things. You might actually really like it. Like this is an isekai, and Attack on Titan is like a like a dark fantasy sh type shonen, like epic battle type. Thing. So they're very, very different genres. And another one of my favorites is Darling in the Franks, which is kind of a mech, sort of. And then there's also my favorite shonens like Naruto and Dragon Ball Z, uh, which are also in my top five to top ten. So, I mean, I, I love any and all genres. I'm not bound by any one genre. And I think if a story's good, then a story's good. And anyways, guys, this is basically an isekai story where, you know, the young male MC Subaru Natsuki or... Natsuki Subaru, you know, depending on if you watch the dub or the sub. I personally watch both, to be honest. But he gets summoned to another fantasy world, right? Which is, you know, f you know fairly typical of an isekai story. But the catch here is that he isn't really given any major insane transformation. He's not given any major cool powers. Instead, he's been given this strange and mysterious power to make a sort of return by death. And that every time he dies, he's able to go back in time a little bit. And so obviously he has to die over and over and over again for this to work. As you can probably guess, this makes for some really dark and psychologically intense scenes. Uh, you know, I know this cover doesn't necessarily seem like it, but, but this story does cover, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful cover, but this story covers a lot of relatable and just deep themes that, you know, obviously involve romance, right? But also themes of self-hatred, loneliness, fate, right versus wrong, morality, and the lot. And you know, honestly, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking. I don't want this video to be too long, so just do yourself a favor, guys. Read this, read the manga. There's also a web novel web novel if you want to read that instead, which is the original original. Or of course you can always watch the anime, which is just absolutely riveting in its art style. Animation, voice acting are spot on. Uh, the soundtrack is just charming and beautiful and heavenly overall, and the list just goes on. It's just a it's it's a gorgeous work of art, in my opinion. Okay folks, so this next series is kind of a fun rom-com type of series, and that's going to be volumes one through five. Let's go ahead and display these lovely ladies over here. Volumes one through five of Rent-A-Girlfriend. Now I know the title, you know, you're like, oh my god, he's that type of guy. Let me just say, don't judge a book by its cover, okay? Like, this is actually a really fun, funny story. And you know, I like what I like, but... Honestly, it's just kind of a fun rom-com series. I'm not gonna pretend like this is like my number one, you know, manga. It's just a fun, easygoing read. This is a story that follows uh, a male college student. His name's Kazuya, and you know, basically he gets dumped by his girlfriend only to find and use this kind of, and that's Kazuya, by the way. <laughs> if this is not the embodiment, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna try to offend any, uh, any weebs out there. And so he's introduced to this kind of service, this dating app, so to speak, called Rent-A-Girlfriend in a sort of, you know, lame and pathetic way of kind of trying to, um, like, mend himself back together. Uh, and so obviously he has to rent this girlfriend whose name is Chizuru, or Chizuru, however you pronounce it. You know, but as you may be able to predict, eventually they end up getting more involved with one another uh, through a series of fateful, peculiar 
or you know outright comedic encounters and then obviously you know we throw in you know some more girls into the mix i actually i, I hear people complain about her i actually like her and then i hear people complain about her as well i actually like her too and then there's going to be another one, I believe, in Volume 6. But overall, with all these girls, kind of a harem-esque rom-com series. I'm not going to lie here. Some of the scenes and events, they, they can be kind of annoying. Kazuya yeah, does kind of piss me off at times. <laughs> not going to lie. But, you know, overall, I did enjoy this read. And I already pre-ordered the next volume in English uh, that'll be released in April or May, I believe. Without really spoiling anything, I did kind of overhear, overread that eventually some things get more intense in terms of drama, perhaps. Alrighty, folks. Next Next up on our lovely list is going to be Rosario Vampire, or Rosario Plus Vampire, or Rosario 2 Vampire? I, I, I've heard, I've seen, like, I've heard and seen all three of those names. Let's just call, I'm just gonna call it Rosario Vampire just for simplicity's sake. And so, okay, first and foremost, let's address something. If you guys have ever heard of the anime adaptation of this, or even watched it, if you haven't read the manga, please, 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 I implore you, do yourself a favor, start reading the manga immediately. This is kind of another fun rom-com series. Harem-esque, sure. Uh, supernatural, yes. High school, yes. And basically this is a story about, you know, this kind of average teenage boy going into high school, uh, but instead of going to a normal high school, he's accidentally sent to this school of monsters called Yokai Academy, where, you know, he ultimately befriends a young vampire girl, Mocha Akashia, this lovely vampire girl right here, who's Probably, you know, his main romantic interest, you, you know, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Uh, you know, but he also meets another, uh, a bunch of other female, you know, monster or supernatural girl characters, which make for some comedic, fun, romantic rivalry, in my opinion. Uh, and in this manga, we're kind of taken through their everyday supernatural experiences, various peculiar events and mysteries that they have to solve sometimes. And quite frankly, they this does actually have some decent action scenes in it. Uh, and some battles, especially as you progress further into the manga, at least so far from what I've read. And I've read up to volume 6, and, or sorry, uh, actually, I forgot to show you guys, volume 6. Volume 6. Anyways, what I really want to note and emphasize here is that this is like 1,000 times better than the anime. And now make no mistake, I'm not one of those, you know, manga douches that always trashes the anime and, you know, thinks they're better than others because they stick to the, the source material. But... I do also want to express my opinions when I really do believe one or the other adaptation might be better. I highly encourage you to consider just reading the manga instead. Uh, and the reason I say this is the, the anime focuses too much on fan service material and ultimately kind of strays significantly from the manga story to the point where it's almost, it almost feels like it's a different work entirely. And personally, I would say if you like the story more than fan service, then, you know, the manga is the way to go in my opinion. Like there were points in this, especially in volume six, where I was like, what? I love it so far. I'm getting, you know, more volumes soon and I highly recommend. Alrighty folks, the next up we have the first two volumes of The Promised Neverland. Um, so if you guys like suspense, thriller, slight horror, uh, maybe some shonen-esque material, then you'll definitely like TPN as I refer to it as. So I actually got introduced to this through the anime as well. Uh, and basically this is about a group of really, really, really intelligent orphan children uh, that basically have really never known the world outside. Their little, you know, orphanage type of area, their, you know, their meadow. But they soon come to find out that there's a really dark, disturbing secret behind their mother, uh, the, the one that is raising them, as well as the orphanage itself. And of course, the series takes, you know, the readers through their exploration into that issue and, you know, just uncovering, you know, the mysteries of the cruel world around them. I, I probably have been slacking a little bit on reading the manga but just because i've only read two in these last three months doesn't mean that this is a bad story it just means i i, I haven't gotten around to it yet I, I do actually think it's really good i just gotta find the right time and the mood for it anyways that's it on that um get a great really good you know disturbing freaky suspenseful kind of story if you like all those things then i highly recommend this story Alrighty, folks next up we have tokyo ghoul first and foremost this is the very first physical manga volume I've ever owned, volume one of Tokyo Ghoul, and that I read in terms of a physical fashion. And then second thing I want to mention is I, I actually did enjoy the anime. I know a lot of people complain about it. It's probably in my top 10, to be honest, in terms of the anime. Manga is probably more like a top five. But admittedly, I will say, as I am starting to read more and more of the manga, I, I'm seeing how the anime adaptation is diverging a bit from the original source material, which, you know, I, I know that can be really frustrating for people who are into manga and anime at the same time. 
And so I understand the frustrations from both from that perspective. But I mean, before starting the manga, before even reading it, like I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the soundtrack, the animation, the characters, and so on and so forth. Like I, I really did enjoy the anime. It's kind of sad to see that people trash it, in my opinion, but I, I did enjoy it. But anyway, this is a story where we're kind of set in this dark, relatively modern world, Tokyo specifically, you know, Tokyo Ghoul is in the name, where basically those at the top of the planet's food chain are not only humans, but but ghouls as well. But of course, they have to feed on humans in order to survive. And so the story follows the young human college student Ken Kaneki, who's a total bookworm, to be honest. But you know, you know, at the start, he makes this violent encounter with one of these ghoul, you know, entities, beings, if you will. And as a result of this encounter, he kind of ends up in this turn of events where he ends up becoming a half-breed, sort of a, you know, a half-ghoul, half-human type of deal. And so from here on out, Kaneki, you know, for the remainder of the series and the story has to deal and cope and learn to live with the duality of being half-human and half-ghoul. And so he's kind of trapped between these two worlds where, you know, a lot of stuff goes down, to say the least. And what I really love too is how we're given perspectives from both sides of the coin, the humans as well as the ghouls. And you're kind of left thinking that, like, you know, what does it really mean to be human? What gives us the right, you know, to exist above others? Or maybe do any of us really have the right to judge another by our standards without walking in another's shoes? This is a very tragic story, very dark and violent, volume seven. Not gonna make any other comments on that, but it's a very nice cover. And so a very tragic, very dark and violent story. And there's a little bit of, you know, psychological thriller in the mix as well. Definitely interesting overall elements of romance here and there, but it's just really an amazing story with themes and lessons that, you know, I feel that can be applied to real life in so many ways. A very, very, very dear series to my heart. Highly recommend, one of my favorites. Do yourself a favor, read it, watch it, let me know your thoughts. Alrighty folks, last but not least, we have the almighty Vinland Saga. Now this, this is book one. I believe this contains two volumes of this series, uh, but we'll just say, call this book one. And basically this is just, I don't even know where to begin. This is an epic of a freaking historical fiction piece. Like if you like historical fiction, action adventure, Sainen or Sainen, not sure how to pronounce it. Do correct me uh, in the comment section respectfully, you know, if I'm mispronouncing it, Sainen, Sainen. Um, you know, it has battles and drama, freaking Vikings. Like this is an insane epic of a manga. Basically, this is about the story of a young Viking boy, Thorfinn, that's his character right here, uh, on his long and arduous journey to kind of avenge his, you know, father's death, uh, who was killed by this mercenary leader, Askeladd. Uh, but look at how glorious this artwork is. If I may say so myself. Eventually, I believe, you know, that the story will inevitably extend beyond just that, beyond just this quest for revenge, while still having that central kind of goal in the back of your minds. But I do think it'll be more than just that as well. Uh, but it's just really an epic of a story so far. I'm really enjoying it. Great artwork, great characters. I'm literally just getting started, but I'm already in love with the series. I'm already able to tell that this is just going to be really, really good. And from what I hear, it has a godly anime adaptation as well with some really nice music to go along with, you know, for the soundtrack. This is like one of the top ranked manga of all time. Really, 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 really good. Highly recommend it. Just freaking read it. Read it. All right, and so yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps up this Manga Reads video. Again, as a reminder, this will be longer than usual. Most of these Manga Reads videos will only have one month's worth of Manga Reads, but you know, because I missed January and February, we did a three month collective video and you know, all, you know, a three and a one, if you will, omnibus. But yeah, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have any, you know, manga recommendations of your own, uh, please let me know down below in the comment section. If you have, you know, thoughts on the manga that I mentioned and discussed here today as well, please leave them down below in addition. And, you know, I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts and engage with you on these series. And yeah, guys, if you guys made it all the way to the end, I thank you. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the patience. Hopefully you did enjoy that. And if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like, smash that subscribe button. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.